see the water's cleared up really well this week, unfortunately. Uh, it would have been good for the place, but never mind. So we're taking a little road trip today uh, in Sussex. We're going to go in between Brighton and Pevensey and take a look at some of the marks. Um, Brighton's the obvious one here, but also taking a look at New Haven, Seaford, Beachy Head, uh, Eastbourne, Langley Point, and a few little marks in between. Some good bass ground here, for instance. <laughs> kick off with Brighton Marina. It's only going to be popular when the restrictions are lifted. One's two for a fiver. If you do want the third rod, it's another three quid. And also they do do night fishing there. Got an inner harbour. Doesn't really get fished the inner harbour there. Uh, but this outer harbour can be really good. Those first few pegs, good for float fishing. And on the knuckle there is probably your best bet for the squid as well. Seen some really good squid caught there. Uh, calmer conditions for those of course and then peg numbers generally as it flattens out squares out there you'll be fine for the place uh, you can cast at distance don't drop it too short here uh, and then the best place to go to is actually the tackle box in the harbour itself and get your heads up on what's been fishing well there so we do have a mark report on Brighton uh, and which parts to fish uh, on the channel I'll leave a link for that as well uh, but it is a good it is a good venue um, maybe best avoided during a mackerel season uh, it can get a bit ridiculous here another option is uh, to fish the western arm I'm not sure it's always open might be a better bet for the bream you can see here it's pretty much pegged uh, the, on the wall itself it's got all the pegs for that so yeah an easy handy platform Brighton Marina you can actually drop the gear off uh, parking is free I think if you use the supermarket car parks Does throw up the odd surprise as well, some big bass here, the squid as we talked about. Uh, there's a drop net that we didn't need on the day. <laughs> as for states of the tide, uh, what worked well for me uh, was over the top of the tide. Good mixture of rigs will help as well, I always favour a three hook flapper fishing a venue for the first time, see what's about there. It's always a chance of a decent smooth hound as well. They like to feed on the peeler crab. Always a chance of a massive smooth hound. If you're as lucky as me, you can catch one this big. <laughs> okay, not winning any prizes for that, but they do come a little bit bigger. So that's Brighton Marina, um, flounder place, chance a little black bream as well. Um, and then something that's often overlooked as we're heading east now, leaving the harbour behind, uh, some of the rocky, uh, chalky marks for the bass on lures. Uh, it's not always the clearest water, but if you look at some of those reefs there, this is using Google Earth, all the way down uh, from Brighton all the way to... New Haven. All right. Now I haven't actually fished through here, um, but again it's something that could do with a bit of exploration. I don't know if any of you have fished uh, Peace Haven. Limited in parts where you can get down on the cliffs, uh, but there is some good access there. And then we're going 
going to arrive in New Haven. So I'm just going to brush over that quite quickly. And we can arrive in New Haven. There's New Haven there. That really big west arm is actually closed for angling unfortunately. You might be alright doing a bit of light rock fishing on that side. You see how the bank uh, beach bank is built up on the um, seaward side of that arm. Might want to give that a go for light rock fishing but mostly now anglers will fish on the other arm or the wall there that's the eastern side and it's not bad at all actually fishing into tide mills there you can fish off the beach as well for place here and, it, and it's a really good beach that one actually for the place um, all the way down to Seaford, plenty of room. So we did take a quick look at uh, New Haven. A little bit of easy-ish access there for disabled anglers actually inside New Haven Arms. And you've got a good park in there as well. Uh, this guy was doing a bit of LRF fishing as well. Maybe worth dropping a lure down and it's sort of easy access fishing really. So if that's something you're after, it might be worth a go. I did get told when we were down here last, fishing into the main channel is what you want to do rather than drop it short. This guy picked up a couple of uh, pollock actually. And to get to that west quay, that's where you need to turn left. And you're following that all the way along past the ship pub. The tackle shop's just round on the left actually on the harbour road. And you can park in there car parking fee there you go two pounds and that's the access you've got to the inside of the arm there as I say so your best bet is is to the eastern tide mills another mark you might want to play another mark you could try nearby is Denton Island uh, for the flounder have a little look at this during low tide. And just having a look at that at low tide, I think that'd be quite good for flounder. Anyway, again, if you fished uh, Denton Island, let us know. And then that whole section of beach then between New Haven and Seaford Head, excellent for the place. I'm fishing anywhere on the beach. I have seen bigger place towards this end, this is the eastern end. And uh, I'm not going to give away too many little bass hot spots, but if you did want to try for bass. How about dropping a bait short off that jetty at the end? That's certainly somewhere where the fish will follow up at some point in the tide. Uh, it's a good mackerel venue in the summer, usually pretty good for parking as well. Um, but the place fishing there is very good. Access from here is limited again, it's a bit similar to that last stretch of rocky coastline we had. Um, but some of those cliffs are really high, it's hard to get down and you run the risk of getting cut off by the tide, that's sort of west of that Seaford head. That's east of the Seaford head. And then the next real access point is going to be for the Cookmere Haven uh, river mouth. There is parking about a mile away from here and uh, you can walk down. 
again I haven't done too well here I've fly fish for bass and got scaldy bass at the the river mouth that was some years ago now uh, but it is an interesting little mark you might want to try and obviously fishing into the river for the flounder as well more of the same with this tricky steep chalk cliffs to get down for the fishing and then it's the seven sisters cliffs all the way to Berlin Gap so again your access here for fishing is going to be very hard indeed um, realistically Berlin Gap although it's quite a touristy spot is probably your best bet to get down and try and check out some of those bass marks there um, there's a little turn in the road on the beachy head road uh, where it meets Berlin Gap Road and that would be your best bet to get down but again it's very busy lots of parking and my option would be actually the tea rooms at the beachy head side which we're heading for now uh, if you want to get access to that and you can just see coming into view the beachy head ledge one of my favourite marks for the bass, obviously. And there it is, the beachy head ledge. Well worth a walk, in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't fish as well as it used to, uh, but it's an interesting mark on a flooding tide. And you imagine the bass following in through the gullies there, trying to pick off things like peeler crabs, big edible crabs as well there. Um, never quite as good as it, it used to be. Uh, but it's definitely a great south coast mark, one of Sussex bests over the years. Easiest way to get to that is to approach from the other side. So we're heading now east to west on the coast road, the A259. And where that bends round to the right hand side, just parking up somewhere here. And you've got the BN27XL your sat navs and you want to follow your nose all the way down to the past cow gap which is another good mark actually cow gap you can see there again always running the risk of getting caught by the tide here um, you've got to really watch yourself there's a couple of steps down to the beach that you've got to be able to get up otherwise you could find yourself running into a few problems But it is uh, worth a walk, certainly, to fish some of these gullies. Again, we've done a mark report on the on the ledge as well. And what we're coming into now, we're actually looking at Hollywell. Uh, Hollywell's a, another really good mark. It's very popular with rock poolers and stuff like that. Low tide in the summer and that should give you enough clues as to what it might hold for the bass coming in. You park actually on the coastal road up the top there and walk down, it's, you don't pay for parking. I pretty much would ignore the fishing in between the pier and Hollywell um, personally, but you can get some good catches of place and thornback actually as well. Um, but the next prominent mark will be the pier itself. We had a look at that the other day. Newly opened Eastbourne Pier. Again, it's a good platform for the place this time of year. Uh, I've had good sole there as well, Dover sole. Eels, bass of course. And Thornback Ray have made a real comeback in 2020 or early 2020 before the lockdown. Um, so if you want a good platform to try and get those ray in March maybe then that's a good spot to head for seafront parking for the pier as well and they've reopened the road there and all along that beach actually is fish well for thornback ray and again for the place which brings us up nicely into Langley Point uh, where my first ray of the year 
see these on the beaches. Langley Point is similar with the park in there, it's quite easy to get parked up. Let's follow the signs for Langley Point there. Um, people have various ideas, best spot for the rays, but you will get them all the way along, right up to Langley Point. And we're going to run from Langley Point all the way back up to Dungeness in the next episode. Um, and with that, we'll take on uh, Becks Hill, some of the Hastings marks, and then on to Dungeness. And there you go. I'm sorry we're not out fishing at the moment. Uh, it's not it's obviously something we're not doing during lockdown. Um, but if you stay tuned on the channel, um, I'll try and upload the rest of that as we make our little journey to Dungeness maybe to give some people ideas of places they haven't fished before if you're fishing for the first time 